Hi Art, it's Vince here, squashing into frame. Um, it's not Grojo today, I'm going to do one that's kind of a bit weird, a bit different. So hopefully it'll be of some fun to you. Now I've had a word with some people at this wonderful place called Mushroom Box. If you look at it online, I must hasten to add, I don't own shares in the business or anything like that. It's just they've been extremely helpful. And I've sent off for some blue grape oyster mushroom spawn. There you go, blue grape. For some reason they said blue grape is the best for this job. Okay, so you can see. This is what you get. And it's um, basically some mouldy wheat or some mouldy seeds of some sort that have got, instead of a mould, this oyster fungus sort of growing all over it. What you can see there are the white stuff, it's mycelium, it's actually the fungus plant itself. Um, the mushrooms are only the flowering body. So now what we're going to grow it in today is this stuff which I have cooked in a pot and it is a mixture of coffee grounds and straw. You can see there you go. I've cooked it all up because obviously we don't drink this much coffee for breakfast so therefore it takes a little while to build up such quantity. So what I'm going to do is put the mushroom spawn in it now and um, the spawn will go in and hopefully if we can get the packet open, I've never had this trouble with the other one. I've already done one of these so we'll see in a couple of weeks what we get. And you can see big lumps of spawn. Now, apparently we're going to mix it up, which is nice. I'll stand up for this one and mix it up so the spawn's all amongst the coffee and everything. I don't know how I'm going to mix it up, but... Uh, and you can see this is really wet as well. And the uh, table's a little bit wobbly. But um, there you go. And we'll get all of this all mixed in and hopefully you should always wash your hands before you're doing this and probably wash your hands afterwards it smells just like a really nice coffee shop at the minute and I'm really interested to see whether actually the mushrooms actually taste of coffee which um, would be great can you imagine that coffee flavoured mushrooms I don't think they do, otherwise I'd have heard about it from before now. So, jolly good. So there we got all our mushrooms mixed in, our mushroom spawn mixed in. Now these are buckets, food grade buckets. You can see I've made some holes in them, just here. They make holes in a bucket, so you cut it in, which is a little bit more difficult. Or you can get something very hot, which I've got a piece of galvanised pipe conduit pipe and I just heated up with a blowtorch and melted my way through it. It makes a nice hole and it's nice and not broken. So now I'm going to put all this stuff in here and push it all down nice and well. For some reason I've been told that you've got to put some wheat in there, some some straw in there as well. See, not wheat. So that's what we've done. Whether this makes it any better or any worse, I don't know. But this is what the man at the mushroom box said to do. So this is what indeed we're doing. We're trying to follow it. And the reason we're using coffee is because I've seen that on the internet as well. And apparently it uh, it works quite well. And we happen to, uh, as you probably know from previous. Uh, Rojos. We work in a school and the school has a coffee machine and they've been wasting this product and uh, throwing all these coffee grounds away and uh, now thanks to a friend of mine in the maintenance department we are now saving them and so see if we can grow some mushrooms on them and then we put the lid back on and I'll do the other one and then after they've got the lids back on you have to follow the instructions. The instructions are on the website. There you go. That's all I do. And I'm going to do another one now. I've got a nice yellow one here. See so 
check on grass and yellow measurements. And I don't put a drainage hole in them, but that's right or wrong, I don't know. I just thought it would stay a bit damper if we didn't put a drainage hole in them. And as we've got some, if it was just coffee grounds, I should imagine this will fall out of the hole. But um, we haven't got just coffee grounds, it's a bit of wheat as well for the straw. So, and that will help keep everything all together. So all I'm going to do is press it down so it's nice and firm. It's already got the, I think it's the inoculation they call it. Of all the mushroom spores in there already, mushroom mycelium. The, the spores are actually shed from the mushrooms themselves. And these being oyster mushrooms, they're sort of bracket fungus. So hopefully all the mushrooms should grow out all outside the pots. Now, if you'd like to go and nip over and get me a big plastic bag, please. So my able assistant here is leaping to the rescue. A big one. One of the white ones. Now, yeah, that's it. They're nice and big. Now, the reason why is to keep warm for a few days. Well, about a week. Looks like it's going to be difficult for that. And um, it has to remain humid and it says something like an airing cupboard. However, I haven't got an airing cupboard. So, but I have got a position in a kitchen next to the radiator. And there is my mushrooms. So what I'm going to do now, apart from making a big mess on the table, is, and we got, oh dear, thank you. My excellent uh, assistant today is my son, who's done a very good job working out of his bin bag. What I'm going to do today is put these both in a plastic bag. Mainly, it stops the mess from falling out everywhere. Um, mainly, I probably ought to have cleaned my hands before I put them in a plastic bag. And I can go in like this. This is to keep it damp, humid, warm, whatever, until the mushrooms are getting ready to grow. And then I'll just put a tie on the top. So basically, it will keep my mushrooms nice and humid and moist. Now I've got to go and find a container to do the rest. Hold on, uh, if you now can switch me off and I'll say, Vince here, hope you enjoy your holiday from this Grojo, saying goodbye.